What's up? It's the Atlanta Logic Trainer, and today I want to show you guys my new workflow with Logic and Machine. Now, those of you who have seen uh, some of my videos, especially the one on um, Logic and Machine and how to track sounds um, from the setup that F Major shared with us a while back, uh, basically allowing you to program Machine into Logic's arrangement and record the MIDI notes right onto a track inside of Logic instead of inside of Machine's uh, sequencer. And so my video was an add-on to that to show you how to track those sounds out because there were a lot of questions about that. Um, well, I was using that workflow um, that F Major gave us, basically setting it up in the environment and it worked really well, but there were some limitations as I continued to use it. One of the things that was limiting was if you wanted to pitch a particular sound up or down 16 times or even more um, and you switched it back over from controller mode into the standard mode and set it to keyboard and then went back into controller mode it wouldn't record the pitch notes into Logic's arrangement and I was having a difficult time with that so I started reading and um, looking up stuff and just trying to figure it out with my understanding of MIDI and how it should all work um, and figured out a new workflow um, that doesn't even use the environment um, that I think you guys are like and I just want to demonstrate and show it to you today. First thing you're going to need to do um, is inside Logic just open up a empty project. So I'm going to open up an empty project here and in an empty project when, when you first open it, you got to choose what kind of track you want. Uh, and of course, we know we're going to use a software instrument track. Uh, we've used those before. Software instrument tracks allow you to instantiate any type of virtual instrument, whether it be third party or one that comes installed in Logic, onto a track and be able to control it via MIDI. We also used external MIDI tracks in the other workflow. Um, but we're not going to use external MIDI tracks at all. So we're going to use a software instrument track, but this is the crucial moment right here. You're going to use a software instrument track, but you want it to be multi-timbral. Now, what multi-timbral means is some software instruments have the ability to listen to MIDI coming from more than one MIDI channel, up to 16. I'm not sure if you knew that Machine was a multi-timbral MIDI instrument, MIDI software instrument. Uh, this technology, I mean, MIDI has been around, I think, 30 years this year. And um, with keyboards and things in the past, like, say, for instance, a Triton or a uh, Motif or a Phantom or whatever, those keyboard boards were multi-timbral, meaning you could connect one MIDI cable to them and then be able to send 16 separate channels of MIDI, which would allow you to control a different instrument on each MIDI channel. So, for instance, MIDI channel 1 could be controlling the drum sounds in your Triton and then MIDI channel 2 could be controlling the bass sound and then MIDI channel 3 could be controlling the guitar and so forth and so on so you could build a composition with one keyboard but with 16 separate sounds all coming from that one device controlled through one MIDI cable that's the same thing that this is going to allow us to do so we want to create a software instrument with 16 MIDI channels now you could do 8 but we're going to choose 16 and I'll explain why a little bit later on it's um really cool why we're going to choose 16 so we're going to leave it at 16 that's the default thing it does by the way so say create and then you get these 16 channels or 16 tracks in logic all software instrument blank tracks right so we're going to make sure you select the first track the first track and on that track we're going to go here to the inspector under the io in the input section and we're going to instantiate au instruments native we're going to do machine now here you have a choice again if you're going to want to separate these sounds later on I would advise you choosing a multi output now just so things don't get all crazy and messed up and if you're not sure about how to do that check my other video um, on Logic and Machine which demonstrates exactly how to separate your sounds and it'll work basically the same way for this workflow I'm going to demonstrate today so I'm going to select multi output one stereo 15 mono and you'll see machine pop up over here and then you'll also see machine come up here in the screen where we can work with it okay so once machine is up um, you know that machine has eight different groups right group A through H and 
that means we can load eight different kits into machine. Um, I'm not going to load all eight because it's time limits in this video and it's just unnecessary at this point. Um, but I'm just going to load about three or four kits in here. So let me drag in a couple of kits. And let's just do four for good measure. Okay. So now in group A, I have a kit called Crazy Lows. Group B, another kit. Group C, another kit. Group D, another kit. And of course, I could have put some in E, F, G, or H. Uh, right now, the way machine is set up it is set up to control these sounds and record them into machines sequencer down here at the bottom because that's the standard way that it works as a plug-in meaning if I started record on machine it would actually record those notes in here in this workflow just as with F majors workflow we want to record the MIDI over here on tracks in logic so that when we go to a range and we start adding other instruments that are not machine. All of our MIDI regions are here. We can just copy and paste and build our arrangement here in Logic instead of having to deal with the scenes and how they relate to the timeline in Logic, which can get wacky. Um, I had have figured it out and had a workflow there, but this just works so much better for me. Um, and apparently you're looking for something like that too because you're watching the video. So this is how this is gonna work. So remember right now, everything would be recorded into machine in the standard way. We're going to change this controller or the machine controller from standard machine mode over to MIDI mode by holding down shift and hitting the control button up here and you'll see the screen change. Um, you have to choose one of your templates up here. Uh, usually the default one that comes up works great. Um, I've created a custom template um, for my controller and you'll see it a little bit differently than how maybe the one that you've been used to working that just default pops up and I'll show you how to set that up in another video that I'm going to upload but basically this is a custom controller setup that I've made for Logic but the things that I'm going to demonstrate the basic parts in here with, are going to work for you too you don't have to do any customizing right now but in another video, I'll show you how to customize because I'm going to be using the transport and everything right here from machine to start, playback, stop, rewind, record, undo, redo, cycle mode, and everything. Um, so now that we're in controller mode or MIDI mode, um, these tracks over here that we created, we created 16 separate tracks. If you look in your inspector, this up here is your uh, region parameters, but this, these are your track parameters. So each track that we created, if you click on the track, it'll show you which MIDI channel it's sending to. So this track is sending to MIDI channel one, then track two is sending to middle ch MIDI channel two, track three, MIDI channel three, track four, MIDI channel four, and you get the idea all the way up to track 16, which is sending to MIDI channel 16. So each one of those tracks are sending to a different MIDI channel. And if you look at all of the tracks, it looks like they all have machine instantiated on them. But it's really only one version of machine open. This one right here. It's one plug-in open and it's now multi-timbral. It's listening to all 16 of these channels. Now, basically the same way with the setup going through the environment where we created objects and sent all of those things to separate MIDI channels. But this way you don't have to use the environment. All the work is done right here once you set it up as multi-timbral. Okay, so now on a lot of the things that are in the uh, video on how to set it up with the environment that F major did we still have to do so for each one of these groups over here we need to assign it to a separate MIDI channel and we do that by selecting the group here and then going down here to the sequencer area and clicking on this menu sound MIDI batch setup and you want to say sounds to MIDI notes you want to make sure this is clicked I think by default it's up here Make sure sounds to MIDI notes is clicked. And then for track one, we're going to set that to MIDI channel one. Leave the root note at C3 because that's going to respond to this pad right here. That is C3. That's your root note. So we're going to say apply. Go to group B. Sound to MIDI batch setup. This one is going to be MIDI channel two. Apply. Group C. Go down here. Sounds to MIDI batch setup. And once you do one, then they'll always have this selected. So I'm going to set this one to three, MIDI channel three. Make sure you apply. 
and then D we're gonna go here and say sound and MIDI batch set up four now if we had other sounds here we would do MIDI channel five six seven and eight for groups E F G and H so you get the idea with that I'm just gonna do these top four here so now once we've done that you'll see that if I select this track here and play these pads it's playing the sounds that are in this crazy lows kit if I go to track two we got a whole nother set of sounds if I go to track three got a whole nother set of sounds and track four another set of sounds right so you get the idea for all of these tracks we could just continue to add those uh, groups in here and go all the way up to track eight and it will be a separate MIDI channel plugging into it and then it will work basically like this let's uh let's go to track uh, two I think let's see I'm just gonna set a slower tempo here and if you notice I'm gonna be using the transport buttons from right here on the machine controller to control logic for record and everything so I'm gonna hit record here just do a little simple two bar thing here so I got two bars recorded there and uh, let's see if I want to cycle that just to show off some of my custom shortcuts here because that region is selected you'll notice that if I turn my cycle mode on that I have a four bar cycle there but if I want it to be the same length as that region I'm gonna hit this button here and it sets my cycle to the same length and now I'm just going to add uh, some quick hi-hats to that just so we can have something on a couple of tracks here. Alright, and I think I need to quantize both of those because my timing was a little bad. So you get the idea, if I continue to go to different tracks, program from here to record the MIDI over here and it's playing the sounds in machine. Now all of my MIDI regions are here. When I go to do my arrangement, I can just map it out right in Logic's arrange area. So tracks nine through 16. So remember I was saying that I had an issue with the way uh, the other setup where you go into the environment and basically set it up to do basically the same things here with eight tracks but when I wanted to take one sound and pitch it across my keyboard or across my pads it would never write that information in the way I expected it to I mean it, it wouldn't work at all um, so in this setup that's what we're going to use channels 9 through 16 for or tracks 9 through 16 which are associated with channel 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 and 16 so first thing we're going to do is we're going to find a sound that we want to pitch. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go to, let's go track three here. Let's say we want to pitch this particular sound right here up 16 or down 16 or whatever. We just want to pitch it and have it to go across the pads. Um, and if you got a MIDI keyboard hooked up to Logic, also it'll also control those sounds inside of machine. For instance, notice I'm not gonna be touching this, I'm playing my keyboard controller. And I'm still triggering those sounds in machine. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is, we said we wanted to set this one up to 16 uh, pitch levels. So I'm gonna, I know that's because it's on track three, then it's in group C. And because it's in group C, uh, let's play it see which sound it is so you see uh, Tom number six or Tom four on pad number six lighting up here so I'm gonna select that sound and once I select that sound I'm gonna control click on it and I'll get this menu 
which is different from this menu. Not You don't want to click this down area and go to the sound MIDI batch setup. You just want to control click on the drum pad and go to sound MIDI settings. And when you go here, this button is probably not enabled on yours by default, but you do want to enable it. And once it's enabled, what you want to do is we're basically going to tell this particular pad right here to respond to channel 9, MIDI channel 9 coming in, and that's going to be associated with track 9. So I'm going to go here where it says channel, point this to channel 9. And here's where I set the high note and the low note. So for instance, uh, in this situation, I'm going to set the low note to C3, which will be this, if I play this pad right here, but it, C3 will be the default root note because that's the root note here. I'll explain all that in a second. So we're going to set this to C3. I'm just clicking and dragging down on this. And I'm going to put it in C3. And then I'm going to drag this one all the way up to F sharp 8, which is at the top of the keyboard. And I'll tell you why I did that also. And I'm going to leave the root note at this moment at C3. So let me get out of here, go to track number 9. Now that I have track number 9, which is sitting MIDI channel 9, it's pitched up the keyboard, just like you would expect it to be. Let me open it back up again so I can show you some other things. Okay, so you see it's pitched up your pads just like you would want it to be and if I uh, wanted to record it in here I'm just going to mute these two regions and go here record it in so you see it records it right into the software and just like I played it it's playing it back I couldn't do that in the other setup. Uh, now notice that the lowest note is the same as the root note was the original note here when we played it in that particular group. Um, what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to go back in here one more time and show you how you can pitch it down if you want to. So if I say sound MIDI settings change the root note if you wanted to start at a lower octave just change the root note from C3 to like C2 come on mouse there we go and I can go down further you know you can go down to whatever you want put it back at C2 now uh, also if you have a keyboard controller controlling it, the reason I set this to F8 is because this one only goes up to like, I think, D sharp 4 to 16 keys up from C3. But on my keyboard controller, I can go up even past that. So I can go. And if I wanted to go lower on the keyboard, I would just reduce this low note to way down here and then. I could start way at the bottom of the keyboard. I shouldn't have reduced it that low. But I could start way at the bottom of my keyboard controller and play those, pitch those notes all the way up. So that's, you know, my setup, my workflow now uh, for Logic and Machine. Uh, Native Instruments is about to release uh, version 1.8 of Machine. I'm excited to see that. I noticed, uh, I read on the website, um, showing some of the new features and one of the new things they're going to add is the ability to control your software that you're using uh, machine as a plug-in in with their transport but that's while you're programming via this inside the standard way that's not if you're using my setup at least I don't think it is we'll have to wait and see um, also some other cool things coming out for that and we're still waiting on Logic X of course hopefully we'll see that pretty soon and see what that's all about it should be exciting thanks